Hi everyone, it's Maureen Wong for yournextstamp.com. Today we're going to be making this cute Seize the Day card that has a water pocket filled with glitter and water on the front of it. So let's get started. To start with, I'm going to make the background and I'm using three colors of Distressed Reinkers, Mowed Lawn, Salty Ocean, and Dusty Concord, which is my like go-to trio for watercolor backgrounds. I have a piece of watercolor paper. It's cut about four and a half by six. I spritzed it generously with water and then I'm taking my three ring anchor colors and dropping little droplets of the colors all over there, the background, and then I'm spritzing them with water. And you can spritz as much as you like. Um, you wanna be careful though that you don't spritz too much to get the colors really muddy. Um, and you can spritz right on top of the color to get it to move around. And then what I'm going to do is take, um, I'm going to put it on a little board because I'm going to be doing some heating of it and I don't want it to warp my cutting mat underneath there. And I'm just taking a paintbrush and kind of moving the water and the color around. I'm sorry, the piece of watercolor paper is a little bit out of frame there, but I brought it back in frame here and I'm using my heat tool to kind of dry the background a little bit and you'll notice that I've got a giant puddle of water in the middle and I am going to um, heat the edges up but then at a certain point I notice there's a little bit of blank color or blank areas so I move some more color around and my color is starting to get a little muddy so I picked up the extra water and picked up a little bit too much water so I just spritzed and put a little bit more reinker and spritz some more and I'm gonna move the color around again and then come back in and just dab off little bits of the water and then come back in with my heat tool and heat that more until it's all dry it does take a while um, and you can blot up more of the water if you want to help make it go a little faster or if you don't want to do with the heat tool you can just set it aside and let it dry on its own um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I could have taped this down to the board before I started so that it wouldn't warp so much when I'm doing this technique but I didn't think about it until after I already started um, but that's one thing that you can think about doing when you're making your own watercolored background with this technique. So I've got it almost all dry and I have a little puddle of water on the back so I'm gonna dab those up and finish drying my piece. And because my piece got so warped I actually ran it through my die cutting machine with no dies just um, a bunch of shims and plain plates to kind of flatten it out after this was done I did that off camera so the next step I'm gonna do is take the your next stamp sea creatures one set the puffer fish and the turtle and I laid them out um, on my misty on the panel where I want them and I'm picking them up with the misty cover and then I'm going to ink those both up with VersaFine onyx black ink and stamp that directly onto my watercolored background I'm doing a really quick and simple card this time you could actually stamp those separately color them in however you want to color them and then add them onto the panel but I'm doing super fast here today so I am just stamping them right on the background and you can see they look fine um, just stamped right on the background and now I've got out my wood burning tool here. Um, you probably heard about the Fiskars fuse and I decided not to buy the Fiskars fuse because it was a little expensive and I couldn't get it with a coupon. So I bought this wood burning tool from Amazon for a fraction of the price. And now I've got a cork backed metal ruler and I'm just running my wood burning tool with the round tip um, straight down that side of the ruler and it fuses it together and also cuts it away from the rest of the page protector and what I have there is just a uh, plastic like a sheet protector but it's a photo pocket protector and this is actually meant to store A2 sized cards so these pockets are just about the perfect dimensions for the a2 sized water pouch so I am just eyeballing it and taking off a little bit extra from each of the edges and that's gonna bring it down to the size that I need 
and so I fused the three sides together and you can see that I've made myself a little pocket and I'm gonna put down my wood burning tool on its stand for a little while and you want to make sure you put it down on its stand so it doesn't knock over and burn anything and then I'm going to measure this against my background but I forgot to cut down my background so I went ahead and die cut that um, with the biggest of the stitch rectangle die set and you can see the whole set there so I die cut it out and now when I'm checking my pocket size I see it's just a little bit too tall for my background so I'm gonna come in and again eyeballing just cut off a little bit extra from that top portion of the pocket and you just kinda keep a steady pace it pretty easy to use actually um, I just played with it a little bit before I actually started with the pockets and it's just no problem at all to do this so now I measure it against my pocket and I see I have to cut off a bunch on that side but first what I'm gonna do is actually make my water pocket so I'm gonna carefully set aside my wood burning tool and I'm using Art Institute glitter this is called angel dust and it's a really super fine iridescent glitter and I'm gonna shake just a little bit too much into my pocket you wanna be a little more careful maybe use a spoon instead of shaking it directly from the bottle um, but I end up getting quite a bit in there and it was a little bit too much so in the future I will definitely be using a spoon or some other type of instrument to put the glitter in the pocket and now I am getting ready to put the water in my pocket so what I'm doing here is folding up a little towel and I'm going to put it under one end of my glass cutting mat or glass mat which is actually what I'm cutting on it's safe for this type of use and that tilts my board up so that the water doesn't flow out of the pocket on that side of my cutting area and then I'm going to just pour some plain old tap water in there and see how it looks gauging how much water I actually want to put in there moving my glitter around um, poking at the pocket to see if I have enough water if it spreads out nicely enough um, and what I'm doing here is I'm using my ruler to kind of spread out the water so that it gets all the way into the um, farther edges of the pocket and I'm checking I think there's not enough water so I'll put just a little bit more water in there and what I want is a pocket that's still relatively flat but has enough water in it to make it fun to poke at basically and I'm taking my ruler and I'm squishing the water down a little bit outside of the area where I'm gonna be cutting and fusing and so there's gonna be a little bit of water spilling out of that pocket from the top but there won't be any from the bottom of the pocket because that is instantly fused and cut at the same time and now I'm just getting rid of that big clump of glitter and testing out how my pocket is and if I don't like it I can actually just redo it from here but actually I like this and I'm gonna test it over my card you can see that the little bit too much glitter kind of obscures the sea creatures a little bit which is why I said next time I wouldn't use so much glitter um, but it's fine now I'm getting out my stitch rectangle die set again and I'm gonna make a frame to go on the front of my card and I'm using black Stampin' Up! cardstock and I'm checking to make sure that's the right size for the inner piece and now I'm gonna place down both of my stitch rectangles where I want them to cut and you can measure this but um, I'm just gonna eyeball it to hopefully center that smaller one within the larger one and then I'm going to stick it down with some painter's tape and run it through my die cut machine okay so I've got my frame all cut out and you can see it there and you'll notice the stitch detailing on the outside but not the inside because that's how the dies work and I'm just testing it to make sure it fits nicely and of course it does because I cut them both with the exact same outer die now I got my misty out again and I am treating my frame with my anti-static powder bag 
and placing that frame in the corner of my MISTI so that I can stamp my sentiment from Sea Creature Sentiment, specifically the Seize the Day sentiment. Let me get that out of the pocket and put that down where I want it on um, my frame. And then I'm going to pick it up with my misty cover and make sure my frame is in place so that it stamps in exactly the right place. And I am inking this up with Versamark ink because I'm going to emboss and I'm using white detail powder. Oh wait, let me get to that first. I stamped it down. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself and I use white detail embossing powder from Sparkle and Sprinkle and you can use a spoon with this but I just dipped my whole frame in there and got it covered with powder and when I looked at it I thought the top actually didn't have enough powder so I dipped it in again just to make sure and that looks good so I'm putting my powder away and I got some stray powder stuck in the little stitching details of my frame so I'm trying to get those out. Um, you want to make sure that you get all the stray embossing powder off before you heat it otherwise you're going to have little white speckles all over your beautiful black frame. Okay so that's all done heating and there you can see the seize the day on the frame. Okay, now it's time to assemble the card. I have a A2 size card base done from paper tray, inks, white cardstock because it's a really, really heavy weight cardstock and it'll be good for holding up all this weight from my water pocket. I'm just taking my watercolor background and applying a generous amount of my ATG adhesive to the back because it's still a little bit warped. So I want to make sure I stick that down really well. I don't want it uh, bubbling up or wrinkling up underneath the water pocket. And I'm centering that on my card front. And then what I'm going to do is come back in with my same ATG gun. Now I haven't tested this to see if it will hold for the long haul. Um, but at the time of this filming it was holding together just fine. Um, but if you are worried about that, you can use something like red liner tape, double stick tape, um, something a little bit stronger, but I'm just using my ATG gun here. And I'm sticking down my water pocket and it actually sticks really nicely to the ATG adhesive. Then I'm going to come back in with the ATG one more time and put it all over the back of the frame to mount over the water pocket. And I do have to admit that the sides of the frame kind of pop up um, after you poke at the water pocket a little bit. So you might want to use a stronger adhesive to adhere this down. You might even want to mount it with foam tape uh, since the water pocket has a little bit of dimension. And then you won't have it pressing down so flatly against the card. And there you go. That is our finished card and you can see it. Let me tip it a little to get the glare off. And you can see how the water and the glitter move around in it when I poke it. So thanks very much for watching. We hope to see you over at yournextstamp.com and I'll see you later.